Hi everyone, a few days ago I made a video about a Stirling engine and the manufacturer of that engine saw the video and reached out to me and said do you want to review one of our products and they were kind enough to send this out to me so I did get this one for free. Now what I should tell you is that I actually bought one of these for my nephew and just a few days ago we put it together for Christmas so it's funny that they've sent me this for review and I've literally just finished building one that I bought for him. Now the nice thing about this set compared to the last one is that it comes with instructions but the downside is you need to know Chinese. <laughs> Which is quite funny really because on the front they've got some English. But then when you open it up there's no English at all. Now it's not that difficult. When I first looked at the kit I thought oh this might actually be a little bit difficult. And I admit it did take me a while to work out how to do it. But I got it going and I was really really impressed. Now you might be looking at this and thinking well that, that just looks like a kiddies toy. It's all plastic. Well you wait until you see this thing go. You will be impressed even if you're an adult. Now I know a lot of people have no interest in seeing me put this together. So if you want you can just skip ahead in the video and see it running near the end. But I am going to show how to put it together in this video because these instructions, you know, they're all in Chinese. So if anyone's bought one of these, they might want to watch how I'm doing it so they can do it themselves. So I've poured all the bits out and it doesn't really matter where you start. You can follow the instructions, but I'm just going to do it in my own random order. So put this red piece here, then we'll get the medium sized bolts and we'll just bolt this into place. Next, we'll take these two red bits and these slide together. You just put one on top of the other and then if you get them in the right orientation, they'll just slide onto each other. So you just keep moving them around until they kind of slot together. And there you go, they're now slotted together nice and secure. And then we take this bit and slot it into here, and then we use this little bit here to lock it into place. We just put it on and then turn it, screw it around and it will lock it in. Don't worry too much about the position of this yet, just get it semi-tight. Next, we'll take this bit and slide it through from the front. And then we'll put this cog on the back. This just slides on. There we go. So now we've got a nice spinning bit here. This cog doesn't go on all the way. You can only push it on so far. So don't try and force it. It will only go on so far. And next we're going to put these bits on. Now this bit may seem complicated, but it's not really. You get one of the really big bolts and then one of these little red stoppers. Put that on there. Then get the spring. And that goes on there like that. So this is how it should look. Give you a nice zoomed in look at that. And all you do is slide this in on this side and then put it into the red bit and bolt it into place. Now you want to be careful that you don't tighten this up too much. The spring is there to keep pressure so you don't need it really tight. I'll show you how far I screw it in. So there you go, that's how far I screw it in just so the head is poking out just a little bit because the spring there keeps it in place so you don't need it tight. If you do it too tight it can't move and it just won't work properly. So now we'll do the same on the other side and again I'm going to leave the head of the bolt sticking out just a little bit because we don't need it too tight. Now we can take these bits and we can slide them into here, one in each side and we'll bring those down and connect them to this little bit here that spins around. And then we take this one here, this little screw which has a washer on it and we use that to secure them in place. Now this screw is a little bit tight because I think it's tapping while we screw it in. So it is a little bit tight but it will go in there. So we spin this around we see they're going in and out, in and out, in and out which is perfect. Now let's concentrate on this area where we're going to boil our water. You've got these two plates here, you just put them on and then bend them down like that. So you, you do have to put a little bit of pressure on them. So put one on either side and then you'll see that it's like that and you think, well how do I get that in? Well you do have to force it, you have to bend them a little bit and then push them into the slot. And there you go, that's now in place, but of course we have to bolt it down. So we'll use our two medium sized bolts for that. Just slide them in, put the bolt underneath and secure it. And this little burner just slots in there. So we've now got our burner in place, our steam chamber and the motor or the engine itself. Next we need to secure our DC motor. We just slide the wires through here sit it on here and then screw it into place. Don't worry too much about the cogs not lining up, we can fix that in a little while. And for this you just use these smaller screws, so we're literally just going to screw it in, there's no nut on the other side. So now the DC motor is secured in place, and for anyone who's wondering, yes this little screwdriver comes with the kit, so you've got everything you need except for something to burn. Now you might look at this and think, well how's that going to work because the cogs don't match up? Well this white one can easily be moved back, literally just pull back on it and push it into place. And there you go. Now when I spin this, it also spins the DC motor. And in fact, I might bring that back a little bit more. The next thing we need to do is route the wires from the motor. So we just literally push it into these little slots here. 
Don't worry about which way around that you put it, it doesn't really make a difference. So once you push the wires in, flip it over and insert your LED into these two holes here. Again, it doesn't make a difference which way around you put the LED. And this LED should basically slide into those wires. What you might need to do is go underneath and just push this back in after you've pushed through the LED. Basically, these wires should slot onto the legs of the LED. And now if we spin the motor, we should see the light come on. There you go. See it flickering on? So now we need to work with the tubing. The first thing you want to do is cut off around one centimeter and then we'll use that with this little blocker here. This is to keep the steam inside the chamber. So we just use a piece of tubing to connect that like that, it just slides on there. Let me bring that closer so you can see. There you go. Then we need two sections which are three centimeters each. So I'm just gonna roughly guess it around that long. And then we'll cut another one at the same length. And then we connect these to this little T-pipe here. And then we'll connect this to the back here. You can see below these bolts here, there's a little bit here and a little bit here that you can slot this onto. So we'll slot one side on, and then we'll slot the other side on. So just like that, push fit onto there. Then we take the remaining tube, and we connect to the splitter here, and then we put it onto the steam chamber. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, we have finished. Now, the first time I did it, it probably took me about an hour, <laughs> but this time I've done it much quicker because I literally just did this a few days ago, so I know how to make it now. Now, the next thing we need to do is make a wick for our burner because it doesn't come with a wick. I think they should put a wick in there, but we can make one simple enough from tissue paper. Just tear up some paper and then roll it into a tight wad and then you'll end up with something like this. That will be our wick. Now, typically you'd put methylated spirits or something else in here, but I'm gonna use isopropyl alcohol, which is basically just a hand sanitizer because I've got this laying around. So I'll just pour this into the burner and then I'll insert my wick. Now that wick is probably a little bit too small, but I think it will do the job. And I'm just gonna spray it a little bit as well, just to help it sort of get going. And then the last step is to put some water into the steam chamber. Now don't go crazy here because if you put too much water in, what happens is it starts to overflow and then it all comes squirting out here. It's an absolute disaster. So don't go crazy with the water. They give you a little pipette. I recommend just putting, I don't know, maybe two or three of these pipettes of water in here. You don't need that much. And then we'll put this little stopper back in place. And that's it, we're ready. Let's put our burner in place and light it. So if you look down here, you can see that my burner is going. It will take a few seconds before the water starts to boil and steam. But what you want to do is basically you've got this cog on the back. Just give it a little turn to try and help it get going. Although at the moment we've got no steam. Now once the steam is built up a little bit, you can give it a spin at the back to help it get going. Now I didn't get it spinning and I think I know why. I saw some water in this tube and that's what happens if you put too much water in. A little bit of water starts to build up in the tube and it can't push the air pressure through. So make sure you don't put too much water on because it absolutely ruins it. So this time I've made the tube a little bit shorter and I haven't put as much water in because I put way too much water in last time. So let's give it a spin once the steam gets going and see if it begins. Whoa, yes, there we go, look at that. Fantastic, go, 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 look at that thing. That is so insanely fast. <laughs> That's incredible, look at it go. And yes, we are generating electricity. You can see that it is lighting the LED. How amazing is this little motor? I thought it was a kid's toy, but no, it's really not. Now it's starting to slow down a bit because the water's running out. I only put a tiny bit of water in there. So I just blew it out and it stops pretty much immediately once you stop the flame. But that thing is fantastic. I honestly thought when I saw this box, that's just for kids, young kids, it's not gonna be that exciting. But this thing really, really goes, it's incredible. And for anyone who's interested in buying one of these, you can get them on Amazon. You just search for Mohu steam engine and this will come up. They've actually got two. They've got this one here, which I previously showed you, and then this one here. Like I said, they did send me this to review today, but I did actually buy one for my nephew as well.
And from what I've seen, the biggest issue that can cause this not to actually work is having these little arms the wrong way around. You can see in this picture here, that's the way you have to connect them. So make sure you do connect them the right way around because that seems to have the biggest effect on whether or not your motor will spin. So if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.